Restaurant Radio. Dane Neal, Hannah Stanley here on Flavor HD. And today we have got this a topic that has been really, really in the news. I'm sure everybody's seen the story with Paula Dean coming out that she has had diabetes for a while. And... And that raised questions in my mind, not specifically about Paula Deen, but why this was such a big news story and why there were so many people talking about how her diet and and the food that she has become famous for making is is even in question. So, of course, I go to my go-to girl, Kim Kircher, who is the Jewel Osco dietitian, corporate dietitian. Hello. And, and president-elect of of the, say this, The tell Illinois me, Dietetic Association. Illinois Dietetic Very Association. Proud. Yep. Congratulations. That is Thank a you. huge honor. Thank you so much. And we are thrilled to have you as, as our go-to for all of our dietary questions. Now, Paula Dean aside, when when we look at the type of food that that she is known for, uh, more of a southern diet, a carb heavy diet potentially, lots of butter, lots of fat. What makes that a dangerous or a concerning diet for someone who is who is recently diagnosed or has been who has been a long term diabetic? Well, and I actually am a certified diabetes educator too. And prior to working in the grocery industry, I was an outpatient dietitian. So when you look at diabetes overall, whether you're diagnosed as a child, as an adult, everybody's journey is different. And the question on the plate becomes every single meal, every single snack, every beverage, what is it that you eat? And I always used to tell my patients, and I still say it now, when you ha- when you get diagnosed with diabetes or prediabetes, um, everybody's journey is different. And you kind of look at where you start and you have to rethink and relearn all of the food that you thought you knew. And that's the scary part, I think, for people. So when you're looking at diabetes, diabetes, um, what you eat, you have to be a heart smart foundation overall. And that's true for everybody in America. Um, Heart disease is the number one killer in America. And diabetes and heart disease go hand in hand. Now, and why is that? Because this is something I just learned Mm -hmm. because it was someone said, well, because it's a risk to heart disease. It might have even been you. And I, I don't understand why. Well, when you look at the foods that you eat, we all know that fruits and vegetables are so good for us. And that's why when you look at choosemyplate.gov, which replaces the pyramid Mm -hmm. as of last June, the new message, and it's really not a new message, but the new visual is half your plate should be fruits and vegetables. And that's because we know they're so packed with nutrient density, which means tons of vitamins and minerals, tons of phytochemicals, all the good stuff that we're learning about and we know about. Um, And then when you look at fat in general, fat has twice the calories that carbs or protein do. And many people don't realize that. So we want to look at the total fat. We want to look at the type of fat because that's tied to weight management, which ultimately is also tied to diabetes and heart disease as well. So when you look at how the body functions, um, to answer your question, all of that stuff works together. And so when your blood sugars are out of target range, they're too high or too low from where they need to be, Mm -hmm. that has impact long term on the body. So you might have heard with diabetes, you have of course, the greater risk of heart disease, like we've talked about, it can impact your eyes, your nerves, your kidneys, um, so many different things. So that's why when you get a diagnosis of diabetes, whatever you're eating, you want to start and say, okay, let me see what I'm doing and what can I do to make it better? And there's going to be some people who are eating no fruits and vegetables who need to start with one a day. And that's a great choice to start. If you have somebody who's doing a little bit better and closer to the guidelines, they're going to increase it to make sure that half their plate is fruits and vegetables. Um, And then we kind of tweak it from there. So that's what's so interesting about diabetes. There's no quote unquote diabetes diet. It's where are you starting? And the two things that I always tell people to remember is never skip a meal and don't eat too much at one time. And if you can remember those two rules of the road, um, you will be well on your way. And you should see, of course, a registered dietitian as well. Kim, you got a question. Mm -hmm. um, With with everything, with a lot of diseases, people are trying to be as preventative Uh, as possible, looking at things like we maybe haven't before with family histories and then just trying to get a jump on things. When you think about uh, breast cancer, you you find some people even going in for surgical procedures because the family history shows it. it. Is it possible? I know on one side of our family, it's all, they are all diabetics. Now, my wife is not diabetic, but she had gestational diabetes. Is there a way that if you can look at the family history and say, I'm going to get this, that you can um, certainly do all the right things with exercise and diet, but actually do those things in advance and then prevent what would be a, you know, a pretty 
heavy family history. It depends on the kind of diabetes that you have. And really what you should do is, to your point, if you're at risk for diabetes and it runs in your family, you definitely want to make sure that you're getting your blood sugar checked. And that is something that you should definitely talk to your doctor about and make sure that you're getting that done on a regular basis. But to your point, lifestyle choices do make a big deal. Um, And when you exercise, it actually makes your body use your blood sugar, which is everybody's energy source. So whether or not you have diabetes, blood sugar is kind of like the fuel for your body vehicle. Um, And so when you exercise, it actually makes your cells more receptive to letting that blood sugar come in. So your body functions better with an active lifestyle. And again, wherever you're starting, if you're a couch potato, you can't start running a marathon. You want to get checked by your doctor first. Um, And then maybe you walk around the grocery store a couple laps you know, and that's your start to exercise. And same thing with diet too. And and I hate the word diet and I don't mean it the way dieting, but um, meaning what you're eating and the foods that you're choosing, your menus, so to speak. Um, When you look at that, the choices that you make can either promote or be not so helpful to the choices that you're trying to make to reduce many chronic diseases. All right. So healthy, otherwise healthy people can have blood sugar issues based on what you're saying, just because of not eating a meal or exercising or skipping or whatever, where those that blood sugar would normally ebb and flow. Well, the body's a pretty amazing machine. So it kind of keeps you and we like to call it target range, where you kind of want to be where your blood sugars are regulated. You hear those kinds of conversations all the time. But the body pretty much is an amazing machine that regulates an awful lot of stuff for us. It's pretty amazing when you start to look at all the details that are going on. Um, But yes, you can have lower blood sugar. You can have higher blood sugar. Um, Clinically diagnosed is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, But you will feel better. And here's my my car analogy for you guys. Hopefully you'll you'll like this one. But like if you start in Illinois, you would never get in your car with an empty tank of gas and try to get to California. Okay. Like that just sounds crazy. You would go fill up before you start a road trip, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with food. If you try to get up and you don't eat all all day and you're you're running on empty your body it needs the fuel while it's using it so when you hear breakfast breaking the fast um, you want to set yourself up you want to make sure that your body's getting the fuel that it needs so it's not functioning non-optimally I guess is the best way to say it so then ideally if you are going to go on a road trip you would put good quality gas in so for anyone, you would recommend to have a healthier, well-balanced meal yep. as opposed to maybe a higher fat, which is what we were talking about before mm-hmm. and why this is kind of a concern for the public. These are not necessarily something that we would want to incorporate as a daily meal choice. They're heavier, they're higher in fats, they're higher in sugar because you're not leaving it open for those fruits and vegetables and the fiber that you, you should be getting. Well, and I always like to message about every day and sometimes food foods because we know every single day there's choices that you want to make the most of the time or the majority of the time to make sure you're getting those nutrients that we know we need. And you don't need to know every single nutrient. There's too many to try to isolate and it works better as thinking of foods in their natural states, so to speak. Okay. And if you think of the food on your plate, that's how we think of our food. That's what we're familiar with. So again, that plate model is beautiful and it's actually been around for a while in the dietitian world um, because if you visualize a plate, you can sit here listening to us talk and you can visualize a plate in your mind and everybody knows what half your plate filled with fruits and vegetables, about a quarter for whole grains and then a quarter for lean proteins. And if you keep that in mind, that is a fantastic way to plan your meals your snacks, actually. So everyday foods. And then sometimes foods, um, one of my favorite things to say, too, is if there's a party and you're eating the party food, Mm -hmm. okay, and then the party ends and you're back to your everyday choices. If you're the only one at the party eating the party food all the time, you probably (laughs) want to rethink your menu. So (laughs) You'll just know you can enjoy them periodically, and they don't look at them as food role models. Well, and everybody's journey is different, and that's the huge message for people now is you cannot look at somebody else. Even us talking, what we love for breakfast might be completely different. And if you love a donut... Um, and then you make up with it with it at lunch and you have a higher fiber, lower fat lunch. One donut one day a week is your treat. Donuts don't appeal to me. Do you know what I mean? So there's no right or wrong, good or bad. Really, the message is every food can fit. You, you yourself, you look at your individual food choices, your loves, what you know your challenges are, and you start to, to um, snack away at them one at a time, so to speak. And you start to tackle those and say, okay, well, I'm not 
eating a great breakfast right now, so how do I want to tackle that? So everybody's food journey is a little bit different. Um, so I think the great thing about um, food shows and recipes and things online is if it inspires you and it gives you a good idea for how you can tweak your menus, um, that's the thing that we want to remember. And remember, it's every single meal, every snack, every beverage. You can't just look at one meal or one dish. You have to look at it in context of what else you're eating for that day, for that week, for that month. And that's really important for people to know. And so Again, you know, I always tell people, too, if you have, like, let's say a weight management program going on in your workplace and you see somebody that you know is in that program and you see them eating a treat, you don't know what they're doing the rest of the time. So we we always want to make sure that we know we're the boss of ourselves and what you choose to eat. You you can plan around it and you can you give me the challenge what your favorite food is. I will figure out a way for us to fit it in in a health a healthier way than you're doing now. I will take that challenge. Woo-hoo. Kim Kircher <laughs> joining us, corporate dietitian for Jewel Osco or Chicago's very own Jewel Osco right here and also president elect of the Illinois Dietetic Association and that is uh, your what is it coronation induction. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it's an honor and a privilege to serve and we have so many amazing registered dietitians across the nation. So I'm, I'm very honored to serve. So thank you for bringing that up. Of course. And we were very proud of you when that was announced and, and thrilled to have you here always. Hannah Stanley and Dane Neal, thanks again to Kim Kircher with Jewel Osco. For more information, you can follow us on Twitter at Flavor HD. Restaurant Radio.